All right, Connor, you ready? Yep. In three, two, one, go. Good evening, and welcome into Elmwood Park High School, where tonight the St. Joseph Chargers are taking on the Elmwood Park Tigers. And first off, I'd like to apologize for some technical difficulties we were having that resulted in us missing about the first six and a half minutes of the game. There's five and a half minutes left in the first quarter. Elmwood Park has the ball at the 49-yard line of St. Joseph. Second and ten is the situation right now for the Tigers. As Michael Stransky at quarterback for the Tigers. Man coming in motion, Chris Diallo. They give it to Diallo on the sweep. He's got some space. He gets to the sideline. He's all the way to the 29-yard line. So quite a run there by Diallo. A first down for the Tigers. And they have really been going with that jet sweep all night. And I'd like to remind you, tonight's game and all St. Joseph Chargers programming is presented by Meatheads in Elmhurst, a place you can enjoy with your whole family from the moment you walk into the door until the moment you leave. Meatheads, 143 North York Street in Elmhurst. First and 10 at the 30-yard line for Elmwood Park. Stronsky sends a man in motion, and it's a mishandled snap. He has to dive on it at the 41-yard line of St. Joseph. So they lose 11 yards on the first and 10. It'll be second and 21 here for the Tigers. And we've already seen a couple of times tonight some problems snapping the football for Elmwood Park, first on a field goal earlier in the game, but here just on a normal shotgun snap. Hard line, actually, of St. Joseph's. As sophomore quarterback Michael Stransky strides back to the huddle for the Tigers. Looking for the call from the sideline. So second and very long here for the Tigers. Second and 19 with four minutes to play in the first quarter. Stransky in a pistol formation with Ramos behind him. Two receivers split out wide. A couple of tight ends in there as well. Stransky sends a man in motion. It's Nira. Nira picks up some yardage. He's got space and he's inside the 30. And then there's a late flag. And once again, we see Elmwood Park sending men in motion and pitching it off to them. Haven't seen many straightforward runs so far from Elmwood Park. And this is a face mask going against St. Joseph. This is a five-yard face mask penalty. And that places the ball at the 21-yard line. St. Joseph and the Chargers and head coach Rich Petrovsky are going to take a timeout. We'd like to remind you the first quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by Cleaver Supplements. Visit them online at cleaversupplements.com. Cleaver Supplements, pure supplements for when genetics are not enough. So a timeout called here by Rich Petrovsky. And so far, St. Joseph's defense looking a little bit confused by all of this motion going on from Elmwood Park. seems like almost every play, Stransky's picking up that leg, sending a man in motion either from the right or the left. They're liking to do it with Chris Diallo or David Nira. And Diallo is the transfer from, for Elmwood Park coming from TF South High School. 341 left here in the first quarter. No score between Elmwood Park and St. Joseph as the Chargers called their first time out of this first half. And just a chance for Rich Petrovsky to gather up the troops, let them know exactly what they need to do defensively as currently second down and short, just second and one for Elmwood Park from the 21-yard line, 341 to play here in the first quarter. Stransky is under center. We've seen him take a lot of snaps out of the shotgun tonight, but he's under center right now with Olsi Rama behind him in the backfield. Rama the fullback. A couple of tight ends in there as well for Elmwood Park. Tigers may be just looking to give it right up the gut to Rama here. 
and it's a quarterback sneak, actually, and easily getting the first down is Stransky. And up to the 19-yard line, Tigers in the red zone. And we saw them march it down the field on their first drive, but then they had that snap on the field goal that went over the head of the holder and led to a turnover. And now it's first and 10 from the 19 for Elmwood Park. Stransky going back under center. Diallo and Nira. But I lied, two tight ends to the left side of the line. And they give it to Diallo on a sweep. And he gets to the outside near a first down. But Diallo has really been displaying that speed so far tonight. He was stopped, they're saying, at the 10-yard line. So it'll be second and short here for Elmwood Park from the 10. We're going to see Stransky go under center. Yet again, Rama behind him in the backfield. A couple of receivers split out wide for the Tigers. Two tight ends, and it's going to be a QB sneak. This time, not quite as much momentum, but it looks like it's still enough for a first down here for Michael Stransky. Oh, the last time they used that quarterback sneak earlier in the drive, Stransky really got a lot of push and picked up four or five there. He just got two, but he didn't need much more for that first down. But there is a flag down on the field. As the officials are gathering here. Beautiful night here in Elmwood Park. Perfect weather. You couldn't ask for much better. For the opening night of football in the IHSA, always very exciting be back under those Friday night lights and the flag is against St. Joseph it's unsportsmanlike conduct that'll bring the ball half the distance to the goal and inside the five at the four yard line for the Elmwood Park Tigers and Stransky the Tigers now back in the pistol formation He's got Rama to the right of him. Oh, the snap is high once again. And it's all the way back to the 21-yard line. Uh, but a late flag once again. And I wouldn't be shocked if this is going to go against St. Joseph. They may be calling that St. Joseph hit the quarterback after he was on the ground. And we'll see if this is indeed the call. And indeed, it will be a personal foul against St. Joseph for a late hit. And that's a tough situation. What are you going to do? Your instinct there is to go for the football. But you just happen to land on the quarterback who's on the ground, and he's considered a defenseless player there. So kind of a tough break there for the Chargers. As they did, for a moment, it looked like they were going to get a break because of the high snap. But still at the same time, this will place the ball just at about, it looks like the seven-yard line. Seven-yard line for Elmwood Park, but it'll be first down. And Rich Petrosky is discussing with the officials the call here. And. Hey, Charger fans, don't forget to stop by Meatheads at 143 North York Street in Elmhurst and enjoy our fast, casual family restaurant that serves fresh experiences. Glad to have Meatheads as a sponsor for the entire season of St. Joseph's football in 2017. Back ready to play now. First and goal for Elmwood Park on the seven-yard line. Stransky under center. Rama behind him. Man comes in motion. Give it to him on a sweep. This is going to be nearly stopped in the backfield, but what a cutback there made by David Nira. He was going to lose about five yards, but he cut back to the left and was able to gain a yard. He was about to lose five, so an impressive cutback there 
coming from Nero. But we've seen that time and time again tonight. Elmwood Park using that motion in their offense, giving it off on those sweeps, and it's worked well for them. Second and goal from the six-yard line for the Tigers. As Stransky and the Tigers are in the pistol once again. Actually, Rommel will move over to the left of Stransky. And they go with the sweep to Diallo. He's got a lot of space. It's a touchdown, but there's a flag. And this may be holding against Elmwood Park. Let's see. That would be your guess, just based on how much space Diallo had there. And it is indeed a hold, so the touchdown is called back. It's been quite the sequence here with 148 remaining in the first quarter. But the Chargers will certainly take the hold there, bringing the ball 10 yards back from what would have been a touchdown for the Tigers. So the ball is now at the 17-yard line and still second down and goal for the Tigers. And what has been a pretty long possession based on the number of penalties we've seen. Three receivers split out to the right side, one to the left. Stransky takes another high snap, able to corral it, going for the end zone, and that is out of bounds. Nice defense there by St. Joseph defending the near corner of the end zone. So it'll be third and goal from the 17-yard line. 144 left to play here in the first quarter. Stransky goes to the huddle. We'll see what the Tigers draw up here with third and goal from the 17-yard line. Martino Luciano. Behind Stransky and the pistol, two receivers left, two to the right. It's a screen pass going to Luciano, and he's got space, makes a cutback. He's all the way inside the five, and he's into the end zone. There is a flag down. A flag is down. Could we have another touchdown called back? We'll have to see. We'll see the call. It was a screen pass, and Luciano looked like he was about to be stopped in the backfield, but he just made his way and rumbled all the way into the end zone. Luciano at six feet, 250 pounds. That's a big back in high school football. Officials going up to head coach Gillen Mack of Elmwood Park trying to explain the situation. 133 left here in the first quarter. No score between Elmwood Park and St. Joseph's. And let's see what the call is. And it's going to be a personal foul against Elmwood Park. So that will wipe out the touchdown. So for the second time on this drive... Elmwood Park has lost a touchdown, and so now you'll see the very unique situation of third and goal from the 32-yard line. (laughs) 32-yard line. The Tigers need to get in the end zone. Hey, no, Jesse. Jesse, no, front. Stransky with Luciano behind him and a false start here as David Nira jumped the snap there the receiver he was playing in the slot he left before that snap that's going to be a false start it'll push 
back Elmwood Park even further. Boy, third and goal from the 37-yard line. 132 left to play here in the first quarter. Some self-inflicted wounds for Elmwood Park. Number of penalties here on the drive. And this is one of those moments where you kind of start to think, well, it's the first game of the season, kind of working off some of that rust. Mistakes will be made. Here's Stransky. A couple of tight ends on the field for Elmwood Park. Luciano behind Stransky. Zach Rivera went in motion over to the right. Now Nira in motion, and once again, it's going to be a false start. Two consecutive false starts, and now that makes it third and goal from the 42-yard line. Boy, this has been quite a drive for Elmwood Park. They were all the way to the four-yard line. They'd have two, they've had two separate touchdowns waved off, and now here they are with third and goal. From the 42-yard line, Stransky in the pistol. Luciano behind him. Nira comes in motion. They fake the handoff, looking for the screen, and that's over the head of Matthew Barada. So it'll be fourth down from the 42. So you will think here, Elmwood Park will be forced to punt as they're at the 42-yard line. I don't think there's a high school kicker anywhere in the country, maybe one or two, that could they could kick near 60 yards. So Elmwood Park will punt as it's fourth and goal from the 42. Back to take the punt for the Chargers is Zach Taylor. Taylor, one of the most exciting players on this Charger roster. We'll see if he can do something here. 128 left in first quarter. And here is the punt, and it is short. Takes a St. Joseph bounce and lands at about the 28-yard line. Quite a series for Helmwood Park there. Finally comes to an end with a punt. So St. Joe will have the ball at their own 28. And on the first drive for St. Joseph, a turnover as they fumbled the football. It was recovered by Elmwood Park. They'll take the ball with 118 to play in the first quarter. No score. First and 10 from their own 28. Caleb Hayden in the shotgun. Four receivers out wide. Handoff here, and it was fumbled. And it was recovered by St. Joseph, though. We'll go for a loss of three. Second and 13. 55 seconds to play. Chargers on their own 25 yard line. No score early in this one. Snap to Caleb Hayden. Hayden looking. Now he's probably going to run with it. He's got a little bit of space, making some moves, and he gets to about the 33 yard line. So it'll be third and six, 24 seconds left here in the first quarter. Aiden, and this is going to be a false start. Um, St. Joseph's. Looks like it was Desmond McPhail who jumped there. So it'll be third and 11 now for the Chargers. 15.7 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Clock running now. This will probably be the last play of the first quarter. And they're just going to let it run down to the end of the first quarter. And so the first quarter between St. Joseph's and Elmwood Park ends with no score. A lot of turnovers in that, or not turnovers, but rather penalties, mistakes in that first quarter, especially by Elmwood Park on a very long drive in which they got all the way to the four-yard line, but 
ended up back at the 42 because of penalties. They had two separate touchdowns called back, one for a hold and one for a personal foul. So a missed opportunity for Elmwood Park in that first quarter, but St. Joseph will certainly take it. With Elmwood Park getting all the way inside that five-yard line, for them to commit those penalties really helped out the Chargers. And St. Joe is looking to get their offense going as we're about ready to start the second quarter here. And the second quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by the Illinois High School Association. Stay in the game. And of course, IHSA football game across the state here on August 25th. Couldn't ask for a better night. Just past dusk right now here at 8.01 as it will be third and long for the Chargers on the first play of the second quarter. As Caleb Hayden strides back out there to lead this offense. Hayden standing at six foot four. Nobody in the backfield beside him. Five receivers split out wide. Now they send a man in motion. They'll hand it off to him, and he stopped just about right away. And that was Amir Burgi who was brought down there. So it'll be fourth and long. So it'll be fourth and 11 for St. Joseph's. And the punt team will come out to the field for the Chargers. We can certainly see the potential of this offense for St. Joseph, especially with Caleb Hayden and Zach Taylor. They haven't been able to get it going yet. Elmwood Park has been strong defensively with that 3-5 scheme they play. Snap, and the kick by Taylor. It'll take a bounce at about the 47, and a St. Joseph bounce. It'll continue to roll all the way to about the 34-yard line. Very nice punt there by Zach Taylor. Because with where St. Joseph was on their own end of the field, that's really a dangerous area. But Taylor was able to do a nice job. And so Elmwood Park will start from their own 34-yard line with 10.59 here to play in the second quarter. Still no score between St. Joseph and Elmwood Park. But the Tigers, as I mentioned a couple times, really had some missed opportunities in that first quarter. Stransky is in the shotgun. One back beside him to his left. That's Luciano Nira comes in motion. They give it. And he's stuffed in the backfield by a couple of chargers. There'll be a loss of three there. Nice job there by the interior part of the defensive line for St. Joseph's. And now a flag has been thrown. It's been a common theme tonight. The penalties have been all over the place. See what the call is. It's a personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Elmwood Park. So that will push them even further back. Yeah. So they have one guy in the middle of our three Whatever Nice shot there defensively by St. Joe's. So Elmwood Park goes 15 yards further. And now they're pinned back pretty deep in their own territory at their own 17-yard line. They'll be second down and 27 with 10.34 to play here in the second quarter. Got it? Hey, relax out there. You're pressing too hard. Have some fun. All right? Man comes in motion. A little bit of a high step to Stransky. This is Diallo on the sweep. And he stopped at the 20-yard line. (laughs) 
Uh, the stop was made there by Pickens for the Chargers. So it'll be third and very long for the Tigers. Third and 23. Just over 10 minutes to play here in the first half as Stransky will come back to the huddle for the Tigers. Michael Stransky, the sophomore quarterback for Elmwood Park, was elected a captain by his teammates after he performed very well in his freshman season the last five games of the year. Led Elmwood Park to a 3-2 and two record. And now a timeout is going to be called by head coach Dylan Mack of Elmwood Park. And that is the first timeout of the night. I'd like to remind you again, the second quarter of tonight's game is brought to you by the Illinois High School Association. Stay in the game. Definitely excited to see how the first night of high school football in the state of Illinois goes. It's always exciting. And, you know, sometimes the Midwest doesn't get as, as good of a reputation in high school football. But, boy, there are some talented players in the state of Illinois. And we've seen some of them on the field here tonight between St. Joseph and Elmwood Park. But so far, both teams definitely not getting off to the start that they want with the penalties. St. Joseph had a turnover with a fumble and a really a golden opportunity missed for Elmwood Park when they were at the four-yard line. Had two touchdowns called back, ended up back at the 42, and had to punt in the first quarter. So third and 23, 9.46 to play in the first half for Elmwood Park. They're on their own 21-yard line. Nobody in the backfield besides Michael Stransky, and he'll chuck it towards the middle of the field, and a nice job there defensively by St. Joseph as Stransky was looking for Zach Rivera. But the coverage was there for the Chargers. So it'll now be 4th and 23, obvious punting situation for Elmwood Park, especially considering they're at their own 21-yard line. But they better be careful with this snap. We've seen some high snaps earlier in this game. Zach Taylor back deep, standing at his own 48-yard line, and somebody jumped. And it's going to be a false start. That was one of those that looked like it could have gone either way. But it goes against Elmwood Park. So that'll push Elmwood Park five yards further back. They're going to punt from their own 16. And now Zach Taylor, the deep man for the Chargers, moves up into Elmwood Park territory to about the 45-yard line. Chargers could go for the block here. The snap, the kick is up, but it's a short punt. And it's caught. It's caught. It's returned. Here comes a touchdown. Amir Bergey will take it to the house. It was a short punt. And one of the up men caught it. It was Amir Bergey. He took it all the way to the house. Touchdown, Chargers. Oh, my goodness. What a play. What a play there as that short punt was caught by Amir Burgi and he was able to take it to the house. So it's six nothing Chargers. Big play for St. Joseph. So extra point. Zach Taylor out to kick it. St. Joseph's going with that unique formation where they have their line split out to the left. And now it's going to be a timeout called by the Chargers. Looks like they were trying to take advantage of Elmwood Park there, maybe set up a trick two-point play, but instead they'll have to call timeout. But a 6 nothing lead for St. Joseph's. As they return that punt for a touchdown, one of the 
more unique opening touchdowns to a season I've ever seen. Uh, you have a punt return coming from somebody who was not the intended punt return. He was just supposed to go after the punt, but it was such a short one. He was able to catch it kind of behind his back, turn around, and he had plenty of open space to take it to the house. Did Amir Burgi for the touchdown, the first of the season for St. Joe's. So Taylor will come back out for the extra point. Caleb Hayden is the holder. So you know when you have your quarterback as the holder, he could make a play. They have the line split out to the left. And the snap, oh, it's a trick play as the snap went over to the left, but it was stopped by Elwood Park. They were able to snuff out that trick play. It nearly worked. St. Joe's thought they had Elmwood Park napping there, but the Tigers were able to stop. It'll be six to nothing, St. Joseph's, with 9.38 remaining here in the first half after the punt return by Amir Burgi. That's really an incredible play to start the scoring in this ball game. And you had to think with the way this game was going that it was going to be some sort of unconventional score Just based on the number of penalties, Elmwood Park has already had two touchdowns that were called back because of flags. But St. Joe's has the lead, and they will definitely take it. Zach Taylor will come back on for the kickoff. Taylor plays plenty of roles on this team. Really the key cog on offense, but also the kicker, kickoff specialist, and punter as well. Some noise being made by the crowd here at Elmwood Park, really getting rowdy before this kickoff. And back deep to receive it are David Ramos, along with David Nira. So two Davids back there for the Tigers. As Taylor prepares to kick it off from his own 40-yard line with 9.38 to play in the first half. Here's the kick from Taylor. It's a line drive kick, and it goes out of bounds. So second time tonight that a kick has ended up out of bounds. The opening kickoff of the game was out of bounds by Zach Taylor. And the last time that this happened, Elmwood Park decided to push St. Joe's back to the 35 and re-kick, but that kind of backfired, and they're going to re-kick it this time as well. So the kickoff will go back to the 35-yard line. But the last time that this happened, it actually backfired on Elmwood Park because they ended up starting the first possession of the game inside their own 20 after the second kickoff by Taylor. So Taylor will get another shot at it here. Still waiting to have the penalty flags picked up off the field so that the officials can restart the game. 9.38 left to play here in the first half. Six to nothing the lead for St. Joseph's after the punt return by Burgi. And there's been a delay here discussing this next kickoff. Not sure what's going on. So the officials come out to talk to head coach Dylan Mack of Elmwood Park. So now finally, it'll be moved back. And there must have been, there had to have been another penalty because they're now moving all the way back to the 25 yard. So this had to have been a personal foul. It was called against the Chargers. Not sure what it was for. So 
So now the second kickoff will come from St. Joseph's own 25-yard line. And this is a chance for Elmwood Park to get great field position here. So we'll see if Taylor will go with the squib. That's what he did last time on the second kick. Taylor lines up, head towards the ball, and he does go with a little bit of a squib. This lands once again out of bounds. So it will be another flag. And I'm assuming that with the ball at the 25-yard line, Elmwood Park would want to move it back another five yards. But let's see what the call is. There's been... A lot of explaining from the officials tonight with all the penalty flags we've seen. It's not often you see a kickoff from the 25-yard line. Well, now it could move even further back. As both coaches are on the field looking for an explanation. really been taking quite a bit of time to get this kickoff going and get this next series going for Elmwood Park. I mean, literally about a 20-minute kickoff here. I mean, you do not see – I mean, you have seen some weird things in this football game. A lot of snaps over the head, a lot of penalties. So St. Joe's will have to re-kick it yet again. And it'll move all the way back to the 20. They're just going to keep making Zach Taylor re-kick this until he gets it inbounds. But at this point, you have the deep men for Elmwood Park all the way up at the 25-yard line. So finally, the football is brought back into play, but they still have to spot it. And they have to move him all the way back to his own 20. That next five-yard penalty after we already had the personal foul against St. Joe's. The Chargers will have to re-kick once again. Taylor from his own 20 will have to kick it off. And the Elmwood Park deep men creep up to their own 30. So it's going to be tough for Taylor to put the defense of St. Joseph's in a good position. There's a decent chance here that Elmwood Park will be in positive territory to start their next series. Here's Taylor's kick from the 20, just awaiting the whistle. And the whistle is blown. Here's his kick. To about the 35, caught by Nira. Nira now at the 50-yard line. At the 45, he's got a little bit of space and finally brought down at the 40. Flag comes in. Let's see if this is against Elmwood Park or St. Joseph's. It could be lock in the back or a hold, or it could be a face mask possibly on St. Joe's. Let's see what the call is. It is a face mask against St. Joe's. Oh, boy. So Elmwood Park is going to be in great field position to start this drive at the 36-yard line of St. Joe's. So this will be a tough challenge for this Charger defense. But we've seen before, they've stood up to some challenges tonight when Elmwood Park was all the way inside the four-yard line. Now, granted, Elmwood Park did commit penalties then, but still, St. Joe held them to no points. Stransky, one back behind him. It's Rama Olsi. Now coming in motion is Nira on the sweep. He gets to the 30, coming to the left side, and a late flag. At this point, it's almost like we're seeing a flag on every play. And yet again, 
it's a personal foul. Is boy, they're calling a late hit out of bounds, but you know, in my estimation, there, and I, I don't usually like to question officials, but that just looked like a St. Joe player making the tackle. But you have to be careful near that sideline. Meanwhile, on one play, Elmwood Park has moved it all the way up to the 13-yard line. First and 10, 9.25 left to play here in the first half. Six to nothing, St. Joseph's leading Elmwood Park. And Stransky, one back beside him. They sent a man in motion. It's Nira. Nira makes a cut back to the right and gets to the 10-yard line. So a gain of three on first down. It'll be second and seven. Just over nine minutes to play in the first half. Six to nothing Chargers with the lead after the punt return touchdown earlier in this second quarter. Stransky will head back to the huddle and looks back towards head coach Dylan Mack for the call. This Elmwood Park offense continues to use that jet sweep. As here's Stransky. They fake the jet sweep. Ball comes loose. But Stransky was able to recover. There was a little bit of trouble with that handoff because Stransky faked to the jet sweep. And then it looked like they were going to go with a straight up the middle handoff. But there was a Miscommunication there, and the ball came loose briefly, but Stransky was able to get to it. Ball is at the 14-yard line. It will be third down and 11 for Elmwood Park. Stransky in the shotgun. Two receivers split out wide. A couple of tight ends in there. Rama in the backfield with Stransky. To his left. Set back a couple of yards. They send Nira in motion. The handoff is to Rama. It is stopped. That is Shamar McDavid Bishop. And he is the big man in the middle, and he's shaking his head like, you're not coming to my house and getting past me. He is the big man in the middle. Made the stop there, so it'll be fourth and long for Elmwood. Be a situation where they go for it, and Stransky's coming back on the field, so they're not going to kick the field goal here from the 17 yard line. Fourth and 13 from the 17 for the Tigers. Stransky, pistol formation, two tight ends in there, two receivers split out, left and right. Stransky sends a man in motion, looking for the end zone for Nira, and it's almost intercepted by St. Joe's incomplete turnover on down. What a job there by the St. Joe defense. And making that play in the end zone, it was Amir Burgi, and he's the man who has the touchdown there. He gets a deflected pass. It has been his night so far. So first down for St. Joe's. They're going to look to get this offense going. Offense has been a bit stalled so far tonight, but Caleb Hayden is looking to rally the troops here. One receiver on the near side of the field, three to the far side, fakes the handoff, and this is going to get stuffed. As it looked like it was a read option gone wrong there. As Caleb Hayden goes down, maybe a little bit of miscommunication on the play call there. So now it'll be second and 17, and St. Joe's is on their own seven-yard line. Just over, just under six and a half minutes left to play here in the first half. Hayden takes the snap. He's got to get rid of it. Going deep. Catches me. What a catch made at the 30-yard line. Desmond McPhail, what a play. McPhail just went up and grabbed that ball. 
he doesn't have a lot of height, but he used all his hops right there as McPhail came down with a catch, a 23-yard pass from Hayden to McPhail, and it's a first down, Chargers. And false start. So it'll be first and 15. Penalties have been the theme of the night for both teams. There's Caleb Hayden in the shotgun. Trips to his left, one receiver out to the right, and it's a false start yet again. Second play in a row with a false start there. So now it'll be first and 20. For St. Joe's. And they are at their own 20. Hayden in the shotgun. And another false start. Three consecutive false starts made. So it'll be first and 25 for the Chargers. So the Chargers now find themselves at their own 15-yard line, first and 25. Earlier in the drive, great catch made by Desmond McPhail, but they've moved back after these penalties. Aiden in the shotgun once again. Looking for a man, steps up in the pocket, going deep. Oh, he had a man on the sideline, but overthrows out of bounds. And a flag comes out. Another flag. <laughs> this will be the fourth consecutive play with a penalty flag down. Let's see who it's on this time. Oh, it's a personal foul. Roughing the passer on Elmwood Park. So that'll be an automatic first down for St. Joe's. 15-yard penalty. Chargers will take it. They move up to their own 30-yard line. Caleb Hayden. Shotgun once again. Three receivers to his left, one to the right. And another false start. Fourth of the drive for St. Joe's. So it'll be first and 15 again. So there's one penalty committed on this drive by Elmwood of Park with the rough and the passer, but four false starts. As now Zach Taylor checks in. He's on the near side of the field all by himself. Aiden takes a snap, and he's running out of space, facing some pressure. He evades it. He's all the way back at his own five. He's got to get rid of it, and he goes down. He is sacked at his own five-yard line, was facing pressure from the beginning as Luciano Martino made the sack, and now St. Joseph's will have to call a timeout with 5.13 left here in the first half. Second and 15. That's the final timeout of the half for St. Joe's. They lead it six to nothing right now. But the offense has been having a little bit of trouble with the false starts. And that has certainly been a problem for both teams, really. The penalties tonight. And you expect to see that somewhat in the first game of the season. But not usually to this extent. It seems that there's a penalty almost every single play in this ball game, and even on kickoffs. Really, it's just been kind of a crazy game so far, and it's a six to nothing lead for the Chargers. The Chargers currently find themselves at their own five yard line in this timeout. It's second down and 35. Chargers have to get all the way to their own 40 for a first down. 
But they got a couple of plays to work with as a second down. But they have to be careful as Aiden was sacked on the last play. Aiden is going to have to take the snap in his own end zone. He is in the shotgun. Three receivers out to his left. Quick pass. Catches made at about the 15-yard line all the way up to the 20-yard line. Nice little middle screen made there. As Mason made the catch there for St. Joe's. So it'll be third and 18 for the Chargers. Snap to Hayden, looking deep, goes deep, and intercepted. Intercepted at the 45-yard line by Elmwood Park as Bittner has returned it all the way to the 30-yard line, but a flag is down. Probably going to be a block in the back going against Elmwood Park. But on that play there, there was nobody there for St. Joe's. Maybe a bit of miscommunication with the wide receiver there as Bittner made the interception. As it is a block in the back. The interception there thrown by Caleb Hayden. But the block in the back will bring the ball to the 25-yard line of Elmwood Park. 26, rather. Here with 425 to play in the first half. Six to nothing, St. Joe's leading Elmwood Park here at Elmwood Park High School. Tigers have controlled possession for most of this game, but a lot of that has to do with some of the penalties, and another flag is thrown. It's a false start on Elmwood Park. And you would think in the locker room the talk from both coaches is going to be clean up your game. So many penalties being made, some mental mistakes for both teams, really. And you can see when there's actually a play without a flag that there's a lot of talent on the field that could be making a lot of plays, but they're getting called back by flags or not even starting to a, do a false start. Here's Stransky in the shotgun. Diallo comes in motion. They give it to him on the sweep, but this is going to be stopped. Shamar, McDade, Bishop, and Zach Taylor combined for the tackle there for the Chargers. McDade Bishop has been flying all over the place. He is playing well tonight. He's got great size out there. Interior part of that defensive line for the Chargers. You know, it's not often you see a defensive tackle coming out to the edge and making plays, but there was a case of it. And that shows you the athleticism of Shamar McDade Bishop. Snap to Stransky. Another sweep to Nira, and he gets all the way up to about the 28-yard line. Gain of eight on that play, so it'll be third down and eight yards to go from the 28-yard line of Elmwood Park. The trail right now six to nothing with just about three minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the first half. St. Joe's making a couple of defensive substitutions. As now Stransky, empty backfield. Five receivers and the snap goes past him. Stransky falls on it at the eight-yard line. And once again, a snap goes high for Elmwood Park. And now they're going to have to punt from their own end zone. And we saw what happened last time they punted deep in their own territory. Amar Bergey took it all the way to the house. 
Zach Taylor will be deep for the Chargers. But you would think here with Martino Luciano, the punter for Elmwood Park, standing in his own end zone, Chargers might go for the block here. Fourth and very long. Fourth and 27 with 2.20 to play in the first half. Snap to Luciano. It's a decent punt. It'll take a bounce to the 40, and an Elmwood Park bounce allows the ball to land at midfield. Nice punt there by Luciano from his own end zone to get it all the way to midfield. Definitely had a generous bounce there. But St. Joseph still with good field position, 2.13 to play in this first half. As now, Caleb Hayden is in the shotgun. Two receivers out to the right. And now a timeout is going to be called by St. Joseph's. Still 2.13 remaining here in the first half. Six to nothing is the lead for St. Joseph's, but they've got great field position here at the 50, looking to get that offense going. Been stalled out by some penalties couple of sacks by Elmwood Park so far. But we've already seen this St. Joe's offense. They've taken some deep shots because Caleb Hayden has got quite the arm back there at quarterback for the Chargers. And here with 2.13 to play, In this first half, Caleb Hayden back out of the field with the rest of this St. Joe offense. One back behind him in the backfield, four receivers, two to the left, two to the right. Hayden steps up in the pocket, facing pressure, and he is sacked again. Boy, this defensive line for Elmwood Park has been all over the place tonight, and they've been putting a lot of pressure on Caleb Hayden. That makes it second and 17. St. Joe's at the Elmwood Park, or rather at their own 43-yard line. 140 to play in the first half. Hayden with two receivers on the far side of the field, one on the near side. They may be trying to draw Elmwood Park offside. Hayden, back to pass. Facing pressure, rolls out to his right, still with it. Now chucks it deep towards the 32-yard line. Almost caught, and it was out of bounds. It was caught by Zach Rivera, but it was out of bounds, which would have made it an interception. But... Hayden was looking for Jesse McDonald there. 6'3 wide receiver. So it'll be third and long, third and 17, 111 to play in the first half. Four receivers out wide for the Chargers. Hayden in the shotgun, takes the snap, drops back. Throws to near the sideline and was looking for Zach Taylor, but it's incomplete. Rather, Zach Ford. Ford could not make the catch there, but tough play, really, as that was coming out of bounds. As there's 105 left here in the first half. One oh five remaining here in this first half. Six to nothing. St. Joe's with the lead. As Zach Ford is back to punt for the Chargers. Bittner back deep for the Tigers. 
Good punt here by Ford. It's out of bounds. And at the 30-yard line, Elmwood Park will have it at their own 30. One minute remaining in the first half. First and 10 for the Tigers. Six to nothing to score. St. Joe's leading Elmwood Park. Here in the season opener for both teams. Season opener all across the state of Illinois in the IHSA tonight. Stransky in the pistol, one back behind him. Martino Luciano. A couple of receivers out to his right, one to his left. Man comes in motion, it's Diallo. They fake it to him, go right up the middle to Luciano, but he is stuck. Nothing there as the interior part of the defensive line just absolutely crushed that run attempt, and they cannot go after Shamar McDade Bishop. He is quite the player. For the St. Joe's team. Under 30 seconds until the end of the first half. We'll see if Elmwood Park will just run it out here. Maybe we'll try one running play before the end of the half. Stransky is in the shotgun. In the backfield with him is Luciano. And it's a screen attempt, but a sack. A sack is made there. And that will end the first half. So at the end of the first half, St. Joe's is leading Elmwood Park 6 to nothing. You're listening to St. Joseph Charger Football on Arena Sportsnet, Chicago. Perfect. Our halftime report tonight is brought to you by Meatheads, the official sponsor of St. Joseph Chargers football program. We provide a full-service, made-to-order dining experience serving high-quality, fresh, never-frozen ingredients, including 100% Angus beef hamburgers, hand-breaded chicken tenders, and chicken sandwiches, as well as real Idaho potatoes cut, freshly cut every day. Meatheads, 143 North York Street in Elmhurst. Well, it was quite an interesting first half here at Elmwood Park. A lot of penalty flags on the field. And this is one of those nights where you feel kind of bad for the PA announcer having to call out all those flags. It seemed like almost every single play. As now the Elmwood Park cheerleaders and band will come out on the field. And we'll take a quick break here on Arena Sportsnet Chicago. Perfect. 